G'day folks and welcome to well Boydie's Bits the mini spotlight uh, old man rambles and gets angry and shakes fists at camera um, not quite sure what to call this but I did promise that I would talk more about survivor games um, I did release that short video which was um, just I was really worried about my mic quality content and uh, um, decided I'd just put the stuff up so those who don't like reading on websites would watch a video. Uh, but I did promise in the uh, comments that I would talk more about Survivor games and my thoughts on it. Um, I've said several times in the past that I think Survivor games will be huge for Daisy. Um, it was absolutely um, one of the cherished moments I have from back in the day of watching. Um, all those big streamers, uh, content creators getting together and playing these matches and just some of the hilarity that came from those um, events. You know, the games would run for one to two to three hours and it was just an amazing concept. And uh, from what I understand, you know, they broke records for a uh, number of concurrent viewers on Twitch and really opened up um, the genre uh, of that style of battle royale event um, and we all know what's gone from um, there from DayZ and Player Unknown and the um, gargantuan behemoth that is the battle royale machine um, across the industry at the moment. Uh, whether it's on its last legs or not that's debatable um, but there's still plenty of interest from what I can see in battle royales and DayZ and Bohemia Interactive have decided it's time to start testing the waters with uh, Survivor Games. Man, was I excited when I heard the news um, that it was coming. Uh, but that excitement quickly turned to a lot of scepticism and fear of the direction they appear to be going. Now, I've got the uh, website up um, so we can look at that. Um, okay, so we'll just cover the basics of it, how to play the game. Uh, Survivor Games Playground has three phases. Survivors will have to move to different phases, phase one, phase two, and then the end game. Now, the first two phases have physical borders. If you wander outside of these borders into the unsafe areas, you will be punished by damage and eventually death. And they hint at the explosive collar there, which uh, is a throwback to uh, one of the old um, uh, Battlegrounds uh, videos or Survivor Games um, uh, something. I know... Um, uh, Sly Syndicate talked about it in his video, but it's a throwback to one of the old style um, uh, Survivor Games movies uh, that came out many years ago, a Japanese one, I believe. Uh, each phase has different loot, and as the match progresses, the available weapons and gear become better and more powerful. Also, every phase has hotspots, which have specific loot that is hard or impossible to find elsewhere. For example, the construction site has a Mosin rifle, the lumber mill has an assault rifle, the big farm has an SVD, and so on. Try to find other hotspots and discover what loot they hold. So here's my first bit of scepticism. Are those weapons just going to be static? Because there'll be a meta. There'll be a weapon that is um, so much better than anything else. So all you'll see is everyone rushing to that location and knowing that they'll find the SVD um, in the big farm or whatever the assault rifle is that's going to spawn at the lumber mill. Um, that said, it is alpha. You'll probably hear me say that a dozen times uh, throughout the uh, course of this uh, ramble. But yeah, it's... It does worry me. It really, really does worry me, um, that aspect of it. Uh, also, looking at the map, um, going back a slide, um, that was another thing that I was a bit uh, confused about. This doesn't look like it's taken from the actual uh, DayZ map. If it is, um, just shows how much of a noob I am. Uh, but um, that was something I was also hoping for, to be able to play in parts of the map. Um, I know that makes it a bit uh, more interesting, but there's ways around that, um, whether it be um, something they talk about with crash sites and things like that to spawn the higher tier loot. Um, but yeah, I was really hoping, as per the original Survivor games uh, that Brian Hicks and Soma um, developed, um, to have it played out on actual parts of the existing map. Um, with potentially the uh, chance to do it on some of the mod maps, maybe, uh, depending on how they implemented it. But for now, it appears that we're going to be stuck with this um, map that they've designed specifically for it. It is good to see some of the uh, buildings, though, um, from the actual game, so that will definitely be uh, something 
to look forward to when you're playing it. <clears throat> the end game doesn't have physical borders. Instead, it spawns the end game interaction object, which is this little thing here. The object is always in the lumberyard area. Its position is marked with green smoke. As time progresses, um, the smoke will turn red. This is when the real battle begins. When the smoke is red, all survivors start taking damage, the amount of which correlates with their distance from the object. The further away they are, the more damage they take. Not all is lost, however, as the damage can be turned off by interacting with the object after the smoke has turned red. Now, right there, it looks like it's pretty out in the open. So it's going to be a bit of a death sentence, I get the feeling, depending on how many players are left, obviously, um, to go and interact with it. Um, whether it by interacting with it, it only does it for yourself or for everyone. I would lean towards it and probably only do it for yourself, but we'll see once we're able to get in and actually play it. Um, I don't mind this aspect, to be honest. It's something different. Um, you know, the rewards people for being ballsy and getting up close to the actual object itself. Um, but yeah, we shall see. We shall see. It's going to be an interesting um, little dynamic, uh, the way that they've uh, done it and it is uh, a lot different to the usual you know the zone shrinking in and um, everyone being forced together this one allows you to choose uh, where you want to be uh, but will punish you depending on um, how far away you are from it so that was quite an interesting design um, nothing like this was in the original survivor games but i understand they are making it for a um, you know standalone battle royale game so yeah not too bad. Quite, quite interested in this part. Transition phases can be used to gain an edge and find the V3S, which is the truck there, and the heli crashes. They appear at one of several possible locations that are marked with grey smoke. Here you can find long range rifles, ghillie suits, improved armour and other useful loot. So no real shock there. Every game seems to have these um, uh, random um, loot spawns, uh, airdrops, um, God knows what they call them in the other games. PUBG is the main one I play. I uh, haven't played any other Battle Royale, to be honest. Um, just PUBG, and now I'll be trying Survivor games. So, yeah, V3Ss, Heli Crashes, interesting. Um, I do like the V3S. I'd love to actually see that um, in the game of DayZ itself. That would be something really cool. Just something to break up the monotony. Uh, but, yeah, maybe the modders can work on that, but that would be something quite interesting to see. This is my bugbear, folks. This is the one that um, really, really concerned me the most. Survivor Games contains a streamlined series of medical items. They are either used by one action or can be used continuously. EpiPen and Saline can also be used to wake up someone from an unconscious state. All medical items instantly fill portions of your health bar. It's that instantly I don't like, especially the morphine, which fills the majority of the health bar. Um, those of you who've watched Survivor Games, and if you haven't, I highly encourage you go back. There's an official uh, Survivor Games YouTube account, which has got um, Survivor Games 5 and 6 uploaded onto it. Um, definitely go back and watch them. Um, <clears throat> I put a post up on um, Reddit. Um, this one here, Survivor Games. I'm not a fan of the medical aspect of the Survivor Games. I was personally hoping for something more like DayZ, where the game takes a long time and that medical items work as they do in game right now, with a gradual regain of health over time. I feel that DayZ has missed the boat, but could still change it as it's not even released to Alpha yet, with being a gritty, realistic battle royale where players genuinely fear for the life and it won't take excessive stupid risk knowing they could just patch up with a med kit after they beat someone. Look at the epic Survivor games of the past. The players all tried to outsmart each other. I know this could lead to some grinding matches, but I also feel it would lead to some spectacular finishes with tactics reigning supreme, as opposed to boosts and med kits leading to reckless gameplay, a whole new category of DayZ PvP. Morphine in particular worries me. It's like an instant heal. We don't know a lot about stats and so on. Will there be blood as well as health? But I don't see bandages mentioned on the slide about medical items. So, you know, I ask people what are their thoughts and overwhelmingly um, people agreed um, it's a big fail from a branding and strategic perspective yeah um, it all started back when they announced to release for consoles yeah well um, hmm hmm where is it uh, I posted this back in April 
and actually got a bit of a uh, kickback. Uh, Martin, um, the uh, old uh, brand manager, um, said I was looking for drama where there was none. But as a PC gamer, um, that's how I felt. And then I did follow it up with uh, Don't Worry Xbox. You will feel the same um, with the PlayStation. But I'm going to come back to this. Um, but that was, yeah, I've been feeling that for some time. And I actually posted it way back then. Um, I know... Um, couple of local people here in Australia weren't too happy with me um, basically saying I was causing grief for the dev team and so on but yeah um, <clears throat> it doesn't change the way I felt at the time so yeah definitely not a fan of this um, healing process uh, it needs to stay as something different because the battle royales are a dime a dozen at the moment there is you get your fantasy sort of cartoony ones like Fortnite, the more gritty, realistic style ones like um, PUBG, but they're all much of a muchness. You know, your instant heals um, and so on. Daisy was unique, um, and it started it all. You know, and they're forgetting that you know, it had these massive views all that time ago. Um, they're forgetting what makes Daisy so great. So many games have tried to take over from Daisy in its um, category, and they've all failed so far. Um, none of them have managed to capture what makes Daisy so unique, and that is the grittiness, the brutality of it. I remember watching a Survivor Games where one of the guys um, at the very beginning of it uh, ran into the middle of the circle, picked up one of the backpacks. Doesn't even sound like that's going to be happening, which is just one of the synonymous things with um, Daisy uh, Survivor Games. Um, but um, in it, he found an amphibia which had a magazine with three rounds, I believe. Um, so he loaded that in um, and took off, and he actually caught two players unawares at a well, and he managed to knock them off with one bullet to the head to each of them. So he killed a squad of two um, at the beginning of a survivor game with a twenty-two. Every weapon in DayZ is lethal if you use it the right way. Um, you can't say that for all these other games. You know, there are so many weapons there where you can shoot a person in the head even without a helmet and it probably won't kill them. Um, so, you know, it might take a couple of shots or so on. Um, Daisy is um, unforgiving. It doesn't reward stupidity, as I find out constantly because I get my shark eyes and I'm quite a stupid player myself. But, yeah, I hope to God they don't change that aspect of the weapons in the game, but I do worry. I, I really, really do worry. Um, it sounds like they're trying to appeal to the masses and forgetting about what makes Daisy so fucking unique. I think there's even a comment um, like that. Um, uh, which one was it? Uh, bada boom, bada bing. Nope, can't find it. But yeah, a comment about um, that they're forgetting what made it um, so individually unique compared to everything else that was out there. Uh, for the love of God, please don't try to be PUBG or um, Ring of Elysium or Apex or Fortnite or anything like that. Be what makes you so fucking brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah. Then there was this. That shocked a lot of people. That really did shock a lot of people. Um, first time hearing about this classy. Well, he actually made some comments. There's an article here which I'll link in the description as well, um, basically mentioning that the two founders of the uh, Survivor Games aren't involved in it. And that's Brian Hicks and Jordan Taylor. or uh, I've got his uh, Twitch channel up. He actually streams quite frequently, uh, Soma. Um, I highly recommend, please go and give him a follow. That's his address there, www.twitch.tv forward slash Soma. Um, other than the fact that he smokes a hell of a lot of fucking weed in his, uh, when he's streaming, um, he is very entertaining to watch um, and has some really good insights and opinions on what's happening with um, Daisy and so on. Um, but yeah, I won't go into this article too much, um, but... It really did surprise me, you know, when you consider what they did with Daisy originally, they had Dean Hall working on the project, yes, Dean decided to move on, but I know they bought the uh, title from um, the Survivor Games creators, uh, but I kind of assumed, never assumed, because it would only make an ass out of you and me, but I kind of assumed that they would still work with 
uh, these two guys in an advisory capacity and to find out that um, they weren't even aware. Um, yeah, if only you were here, we could have talked more often. Hmm. So, okay. So that's my thoughts on Survivor Games. Um, I really, really do worry um, where they're going with it. I really do. Um, I'll still play it. Um, I'll accept it for what it is, but I really think they're missing the boat with creating something that would be different to every other battle royale out there. Trying to enter a field that is dominated by a few big players at the moment. Um, I don't know if that's the smartest move, but to do it as something different. Um, I do understand that the style of uh, Survivor games that um, uh, Brian and Jordan um, did all those days ago probably wouldn't make for the most playable game um, to the masses. You know, two to three hour games, um, <clears throat> you know, that would uh, be something very, very difficult to sell to the masses. But I don't know. Uh, Bohemia have always uh, done things a little bit differently um, compared to um, others. Um, I hope they've got the courage to do something here even if they make it a variable uh something that you when you're creating a uh, match um you can adjust it to the length of the game the you know the times and so on but looking at the mode this phase one two and three i'm not sure how well that's going to work um i do hope that um this is something that can be rolled out over the actual um current map um but we shall see we shall see anyway folks this was the first one i'm actually going to be doing another one um, i hinted at it before uh with the stuff um to do with this um it's actually something i'll be using again for my next discussion let me know your thoughts in the comments um i will do a recap going through what uh you guys or girls say um i'm not sure how often i'm going to do these but it's something um i've thought about doing for some time no one's really doing any talking things um and cooper bring back your podcast mate um they were great i really enjoyed listening to you and um, um some of the smarter blokes um in the daisy community and rageborough as well um talking about stuff uh that interested uh all of us in the community Maybe one day I'll come on with you, mate, um, if you're happy. Uh, but yeah, all the best and ciao for now.